My name is Leonardo Ghisoni. I'm a project manager at Gomspace. Uh, we are together with Victor Jungnell and Kevin Cuevas, systems engineers. Today at Gomspace, we divide systems engineering in mission analysis and spacecraft design. That's why we have both of them. Victor is the mission analyst and Kevin is the spacecraft designer. For who doesn't know what Gomspace is, Gomspace is a CubeSat company founded in uh, 2007 in Aalborg, Denmark, the north part of Denmark. It was founded by three Aalborg University students. And in 2016, we entered in the stock market. And today we have more than uh, 19 nationalities of people and around 200 employees. We have our headquarters in Aalborg, Denmark. Then we have a subsidiary in uh, Uppsala, Sweden for propulsion. And we have two offices, one in Singapore and one in the US, the Virginia state. In Discoverer, we are the leaders of Work Package 1, which is the development and launch and operations of a CubeSat called SOAR. SOAR is an acronym for spacecraft for orbital and atmospheric research. So today we'll be doing a masterclass of attitude and determination control system and later launch and early operations phase. We'll try to talk not in a very, very much technical way, but for everybody to understand. So what is ADCS? ADCS is all about knowing where and how you are positioned in space in terms of Earth or any other observation body that we're talking about. We go into a series of different areas. So anywhere we're talking about controlling and automation backgrounds, it's people working for ADCS. We put ADCS people right in the beginning of a mission analysis on the control system design. At GOMSpace, we have a series of internal projects to develop uh, additional sensors and actuators. And of course, we'll talk a little bit how we do ADCS system simulation and verification in orbit. Okay? So basic examples of ADCS. We have some basic configuration that practically all spacecrafts have and we have a series of additional sensors or actuators. So I'll be showing to you each one of them, what they are, but basically we always have a gyro, we always have a magnetometer on board or external, we have some sensors to know where we are in uh, relation to, to the sun, and for some spacecraft we have reaction wheels and mag magnet torques. This is a reaction wheel from Hyperion, it is actually in the GOMEX-3 satellite, and we will be putting this in the SOAR, in the Discover satellite. It's in a pyramidal configuration and we have an additional fourth wheel here. Okay? Additional components. We have external gyroscopes that we're going to show to you as well. Additional line or course sun sensors. We've been at GOM Space developing Earth Horizon sensors. We will be putting most probably a star tracker in the Discover satellite. And we have propulsion systems and GPS. Okay. So gyroscope uh, measures. It measures the angular rate of the spacecraft. When it comes to magnetometer, we need to understand what is the local magnetic field and what is Earth's magnetic field so we can align to it. Okay. Then we have other sensors such as coarse and fine sun sensors. The difference between both of them is that coarse sun sensors they are binary. So they are zero or, or one, depending if they are seeing the sun or not. The fine sun sensor, they have a physical configuration here where you can actually measure the angle of the sun in relation to the spacecraft. Okay? And then the star tracker, it requires more volume and power and it has to be looking at the empty space. Okay? And it will compare an image of stars with a, with a database to tell you where, where you are. Usually, we don't focus the, the star tracker. Usually it is un, unfocused. So you have a, a little blur of each star, and then you, you compute the, the centroid of each of them. Then we come to actuators, right? So first we measured where we are in relation to any body we are talking about, and now we want to actuate, we want to, to move the spacecraft. So one of them are the reaction wheels. As I showed to you, we have this pyramid configuration in the SOAR spacecraft and in the GOMEX-3. And we have a magnet torker. So this magnet torker, it's a simple coils here. So we have the one in Z, one in X, and one in Y. And we use it in the LEOP phase. So right after the CubeSat is launched, it goes in a sort of chaotic mode. So it's go tumbling like this. 
Then we put current in these in this, this coils, it will create a um, local magnetic field that will try to align with Earth's magnetic field. So it will stop the, the tunneling time. Okay? That's how we use it. This guy consumes a lot of power, so that's why we usually turn it off. Okay? Coming for simulations. How do we do simulations in GOM space, for example? So things that we need. Of course, we need an orbit propagation model. We need models for the spacecraft, the dynamic and kinematic. We need models for the sensor and actuators. And of course, we need some disturbance models. And then we'll do an emulation of the OBC and test and verify the software through, through Simulink. So in the, in the beginning, we do a software in the loop, but then later we verify this uh, in, in orbit. Okay. So just some nice examples here. This is the in-orbit calibration of the magnetometer. So this is the raw data. The blue data that is the drift off. Yeah. The last one, the red one, is the final calibration of the magnetometer data. The same happens for the other sensors. So we usually calibrate on ground and then verify in orbit, of course. Then here are some examples. Maybe you could say okay. something because it's, uh, it's one of the projects from, from Kevin. In this project, it's a 6U, if I'm not wrong, or a 3U? 3U. A 3U. And we have a star tracker, just as the Discover one. So we we're showing some performance data, what we can do here. And then we have one nice example here. This is not an animation, this is telemetry data that we got from the GOMEX3. And this is showing our performance in changing our attitude. Again, this is telemetry data in an animation. Of course, accelerated. 